Madame Coyton. President, please be seated. Le Président. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. L'audience est ouverte. Today, the chamber will hear the testimony of an expert to TCE 95 in relation to the treatment of the Cham people. And the hearing of this uh, expert is to be conducted for the two days period. And before we proceed to hear testimony of this uh, witness to TCE 95, the chamber will inform the parties that uh, for today's uh, proceedings uh, as well as uh, for uh, tomorrow, possibly, Judge Otara is absent due to health problems. After the bench deliberated the matter, we decided to appoint Judge Toumani, who is a national reserve judge in Judge Yutra's place, pour remplacer le juge Yu for today's proceedings and possibly for the following day. Until such time, Judge Yutra is able to return to, to the bench. And this is pursuant to Rule 99.4 of the ECCC internal rules. Mr. M. Hoy, please report to the attendance of the parties and other individuals through today's proceedings. Et autres personnes concernées par les audiences aujourd'hui? Greffier, Mr. President, le for greffier. today's proceedings, Monsieur le Président, au fin des audiences, all parties to discuss and present. Mr. Nunchi is present Nunchi in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in a courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the greffier. The expert who is to testify today, that is through TCE 95, confirms that to the best of his knowledge, he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is no G and Q support, or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. The expert and the legal officer from the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges are waiting to be called by the Chamber. President, thank you, Mr. M. Hoy. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nunchi. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nunchi, dated 9 February 2016. It states that due to his health, headache, and pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to have his rights to participate in and be present at the 9th February 2016 hearing. He affirms that his counsel has advised him about the consequences of this waiver, that it cannot in any account be construed as a waiver of his rights to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented to or admitted by this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report of Nuchi by the duty doctor for the accused at ECCC dated 9 February 2016, which notes that Nunchi has severe back pain when he sits for law and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nunchi his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via audio-visual means. 
The chairman instructs the AB unit personnel during the proceedings to the room downstairs so that no tea can follow. This applies to the whole day. Court officer, please assure the expert to PCE. Nine five and the legal officer of the OCIJ in the courtroom. Good morning, Mr. President. Bonjour, Monsieur. Please uh, tell the chamber your full name. Quel est votre nom complet? And Mr. Expert, please uh, observe the microphone. You should speak after you see the red light on the tip of the uh, microphone so that your response will go through the Ainsi, interpretation system. Vos déclarations passeront par le système audio et les interprètes pourront vous entendre. Please uh, make a slight pause. Veuillez marquer une courte pause entre les questions et les réponses. Expert, good morning, Mr. President, and good morning, Expert. Your Honours, and everyone. Bonjour, Monsieur My le Président, Madame, Monsieur le Issa Juge. Osman. Bonjour à tous, je m'appelle Issa Osman. President, thank you, Question. Mr. Isausman. When were you born? Quelle est votre date de naissance? Answer. Réponse. I was born on the first January, 1971. Question. Question. What is your uh, nationality and ethnicity? And Quelle est votre nationalité? I am a holder of the Khmer identity card. Réponse. However, ethnically, I am Chan. Cambodian, mais je suis Chan. Question. Question. And where is your current address? Quelle est votre adresse actuelle? Answer. Réponse. I live. In Phnom Penh, at House 174, Street Number Two, 172. in Borai Pipotmai Lan Sansok, along Mong Rati Boulevard, in Sansok Quarter, Phnom Penh Mai District, Phnom Penh. Sansok, Phnom Penh Mai. Question: And what is your current occupation? Et quelle est votre profession? Answer. Réponse. I am one of the staff working for the office of the Code and Investigation Judges of the ECCC. Du co-juge d'instruction au CETC. Question: What religion are you practicing? Quelle est votre religion? Answer. Réponse. I am an Islam follower. Je suis musulman. Question. The uh, graffiti made an oral report this morning that, to your best knowledge, you are not related by any of the two accused. That is, Nun Chi and Kirsten Paul, or through any of the civil parties admitted in this case. Is this information accurate? 
Answer yes, réponse. that is correct, uh, Mr. Oui. President. Monsieur le Président. President, and my uh, next nice question is to the uh, legal officer. Good morning, Madame. Juriste, Please uh, bonjour, state madame. your full name. Comment vous appelez-vous? Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Je m'appelle Julie Bardèche. Good morning, Mr. President. My name is Julie Bardèche. Bah, uh, Adieu, the legal officer of the office of the co-investigating judges. Oui. Yes. Mr. Isa Osman, pursuant to rule Monsieur Isa Osman, 31-2 of the ECCC internal rules, 31-2 plutôt du règlement intérieur de In your capacity as an expert, you need to take an oath of affirmation before the chamber, before uh, providing the testimony. Do you agree to this uh, procedure? d'accord. Answer, yes, I do. Réponse, oui. Mr. M. Hoy, please uh, lead the expert uh, in Monsieur taking M. the Hoy. oath of affirmation. Greffier, good morning, Mr. Expert. I will proceed now Bonjour, with the Je vais taking of the oath. Please guider. place your Donc, right hand on votre main the uh, Quran and repeat after me. I solemnly declare that I saw the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I would like to answer only the truth from what I witnessed, heard, know, and remember in the name of an Islamic believer who have only Allah as God, Muhammad as Allah's messenger, and the Holy Quran as the guideline for me to follow. I would like to swear in front of the Holy Quran Wallahi billahi, 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 which verify that all what I am going to say is true. La um, som chlai ta kap I would like to answer only the truth from what I witness, heard, know, and remember. Vu, in the name of an Islamic believer who have only Allah as God, Dieu comme Muhammad as Allah's messenger, Allah and the Holy Quran Muhammad as the guideline for me to Et follow, comme seul guide. I would like to swear in front of the Holy Quran, sur le Coran. Wallahi billahi, which verify Wallahi billahi that all what I am going to say is true. Est la vérité. Mr. President, the swearing is now completed. Le Monsieur le Président, voilà qui met fin au serment de l'expert. Le Président, uh, in merci. In order to ensure the transparency of the, press, uh, of the proceedings, the Chamber would like to record that on the 7th of August 2015, the Chamber, through its senior legal officer, informed the party by an email that the Chamber will hear testimony of the expert is outsmanned on the facts of the treatment of the Jam people. And on the 18th September 2015, the Chamber issued its decision to appoint the expert is outsmanned through his authorship of two books, while previously employed as a researcher for Documentation de Center of Cambodia, qui a aussi travaillé pour le Centre de Documentation avec le document E367. Issa Osman is currently employed Issa Osman as est an analyst with the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges. En tant analyst. And later on, on 24 September 2015, the International Co-Investigating Judge expressed his concerns on the modality of the questions to be put to the expert and requested that the trial chamber, one, inform the parties in advance that Issa Osman may not be questioned specifically on the information gathered during the case 004 investigation and two, 
le permit and aussi à être legal officer to be present in the courtroom during Issa Haussmann's testimony. So that if any questions regarding the proper scope of his testimony should arise, expert may consult the legal officer in the presence of the trial chamber and the air party. Document A367-1, page 2. The chamber requests the parties to make an oral submissions on the measure requested by the International Co-Investigating Judge on 30 September 2015. After taking the observations and opinions by the party on 3 February 2016, the chamber issues its memorandum on the modality of the testimonies and the scope of questions permissible by the chamber to put to the expert and clarified on the role of the legal officer Et of the co-investigating judge's office. De la du that is document A367-6, correction bah, one. Six, correction. The chamber also instructs the parties to submit a list of documents that they wish to use for questioning the expert. And the parties actually submitted about 250 documents for the purpose of questioning this expert. The chamber would also like to uh, inform that the presence of the legal officer of the International Court of Security Judge in this hearing is to represent the interest of the office of the Court of Security Judges concerning the confidentiality of the investigation, and she is not here to as a legal representative of the expert. Considering the fairness of the proceedings, the concerns of the defense team, as well as the conditions requested by the international co-investigating charge, the, ch the chamber instructs the legal officer not to make any intervention during the testimony of the expert, except where the issues of confidentiality in the investigation of case 004 arise. In addition, during the questioning of the expert Issa Haussmann, if parties wish to use any documents that exist only in one language, and there are no official translations by the ITU, the parties shall not use any in-house translation of such documents, and the appropriate Methodology is to request for the documents to be translated by ITU uh, in order to avoid any delay in hearing testimony of the expert is outsmanned. The chamber would like to instruct the parties that wish to use an excerpt from any document that exists only in a language to use a member of its team to read a un membre de son équipe that de accept in the original language, language so that the interpreters can provide simultaneous interpretation in time. For example, if the document exists only in English, then si a, a, a member of the team who speaks English should read that excerpt and then it will be interpreted en into Khmer and French. En en However, en ideally, such an excerpt should be sent for translation in advance. À faire traduire en avance. And finally, for the expert Issa Osman, Finalement, the Chamber would like to inform you that in, in our decision that is E367 to appoint you as an expert, that you may expert, be questioned que on all matters within your knowledge or expertise relevant to the treatment of the child in case 002 and the assessment of the evidence is the uh, responsibility of the uh, chamber, la chambre the ultimate responsibility for determining the relevance of questions and evidence lies with the trial chamber for that reason to decide whether the chamber shows any legal element of a genocide, persecution Des or other crime is the responsibility of the chamber and not your responsibility. Do you understand that? You don't have to pronounce it on that. Do And say, yes, I do. L'expert. Oui, je comprends.
President, I have some uh, initial questions to report to uh, the expert in relation to his knowledge and expertise. And Mr. Expert, could you inform the Chamber of your academic qualification? Pouvez-vous nous parler de votre parcours académique? Answer. Réponse. I obtained a bachelor degree of English en anglais, at the Bill Bright anglais, University in Phnom Penh. Bill Bright, Phnom Penh. Question. Question. And as you are currently employed by the office of the Court of Judges, and you are currently employed by the Office of the Court of Judges, and you are currently employed by the Office of the Court of Judges, and you are currently employed by the Office of the Court of Judges, and you are currently employed by the Office of the Court of Judges, and you are currently employed by the Office of the Court of Judges, and you are currently employed by the Office of the Court of Judges, and you are currently employed by the Office of the Court of I started. I started my employment in 2007. Je suis entré en fonction en 2007. Question. Question. You just stated that you are employed by the office of the court in Vatican City. Vous venez de dire que vous travaillez pour le bureau des cours d'instruction. And what is your title or function within that office? Answer. My functional title is an analyst within that office. Question. Question. Did you previously work at the DC CAM Center? Have you worked at the Center for Documentation of Commerce? Yes. Réponse. Oui. That was my previous job before I started working for the ECCC. Avant de travailler au CETC. I worked at the DC CAM from 1999 to 2006. Question. Question. What was your job when you worked for DC CAM? Et quel poste occupiez-vous au CDC CAM? Answer. Réponse. I worked as a researcher in relation to the CHAM. J'ai effectué des recherches sur les CHAM au CDK. Question. Question. Have you ever worked as a journalist? Avez-vous jamais été journaliste? Answer. Réponse. No, I do not work as a journalist. However, I have written some articles. Mais j'ai rédigé des articles. Which have been published in domestic newspapers. Certains de ces articles ont été publiés dans les journaux nationaux. Question. Do you also a a researcher on the events of the Democratic Kampuchea regime. Aussi un chercheur sur les événements qui ont lieu pendant la période du Kampuchea démocratique. At this time, oui. Parts of my role is to conduct research on the Cham people during the period of Democratic Kampuchea. Question. Had you written articles or books in relation to the Democratic Kampuchea regime? Ou des ouvrages sur le Kampuchea démocratique? Answer: Yes, I have. I have authored two books. Je suis auteur de deux ouvrages. Dealing with the Democratic Kampuchea regime. And on my hand is the first book entitled Okuba. Which translated into Khmer as justice, and I also author a second book entitled "The Cham Rebellion." Et le deuxième ouvrage, c'est la rébellion. And besides the two books, I have written 
j'ai aussi of the donné des entretiens sur mes recherches such, uh, an interview was provided sur le Kampuchea overseas. démocratique et j'ai donné un entretien à l'étranger. Question pourriez-vous dire à la what Chambre you, uh, what convinced you into authoring the true books that is uh, Okubar and the Cham Rebellion What actually interests you in writing the true books Qu'est-ce qui vous a motivé à écrire ces deux livres Answer. Réponse. I am one of the Cham people who fall the victim of the regime. Je fais des Cham qui ont été victimes du régime. Most of my relatives la lost their lives ma during the regime. Pendant le régime. And I also noticed that thousands of my people died during the regime. I determined régime. that I needed to conduct a research Et in order to seek for the truth, to find the, the cause or the reasons for the killing of my people. <coughs> And writing the books is part of building a history of what happened so that Ça such a history could not be repeated in the future. President, thank you. And I'd like now to ask President, you some questions in relation to your true books. First, uh, on your first book, that is Ukuba. Can you explain the actual meaning of the word Ukuba? And you stated that Ukuba means justice. Can you elaborate a little bit further? The term Ukuba is an Arabic term. The Cham people practice the Islamic religion Les and the main source of that religion was uh, from uh, Arabic. And for that reason, I used the Arabic word the as the title for uh, that book and literally translated into Khmer through my Khmer consultation with Arabic experts. It has two connotations. One is punishment. Second is justice. justice. Within a certain context, the Dans term uh, denotes justice. Ce terme And that is uh, the meaning that I used for my book. Le sens que retenu pour mon livre. That is, it refers to a justice. Le sens du mot que utilisé, retenu ici, justice. Question. Question. And in your book entitled Ukuba. Et dans votre livre intitulé Ukuba. What are the main themes of the Quels book? Can you tell the chamber the, the main content of uh, the book? Quelle est la teneur de ce livre? Quel en est le contenu? And so, uh, my uh, first book, Ukuba, is the first uh, publication that I made. Mon premier And that's when I started uh, working for uh, DCCAM. This came, when I initially started, this came did not actually uh, permit me to search for other documents besides those uh, libraries available in Phnom Penh and at the Tuslang uh, Museum or at the uh, National Library. So I uh, determined to conduct uh, the research to compile uh, those documents uh, related to the Cham people. And I then went to uh, 
do my research at the Tools Line Museum. museum. As I noticed, uh, some people were also killed at the Tools Line Museum. And that led me to read the biographies and the confessions and some telegrams uh, in relation to uh, my people, that is the Cham people. And I compiled those related documents in addition to my other uh, researches through interviewing uh, witnesses, the elders, the victims of the Democratic Kampuche regime. I interviewed uh, several of them. And the result of my interviews added through the compilation of documents from various uh, museums and libraries resulted in my publication of my first book, that is Ukuba. And in the introduction, I also provided the figure of the Cham people in the book who lost their lives during the regime. And I also provided the instances of the death of uh, each prisoner who died. At S21 after their arrest. And toward the end of the book, I provided my conclusion. Question. Um, Okuba's book. Um, what was the date of the first publication? Was it written in English or in Khmer? Response. An official publication was made in 2002. At that time, my English ability was limited. Then I was writing it in Khmer, and uh, I was assisted by uh, translators at the Document Center of Cambodia, and then the publication was only uh, made in uh, English version, but not the Khmer version of the book. President, thank you. Your book, Ukuba, was uh, uh, published was it under the sponsor by any uh, institution or uh, was it uh, initiated and sponsored by you yourself? Answer. I did my research for writing this book as um, as I was a member and staff of uh, DC CAM, and the funding support for that research and publication uh, was part of the uh, project of DC CAM. President, thank you. What were your research and uh, study? And what were, were your methodologies that lead to um, the, read, uh, the writing of your books um, of Ukuba? Respond, yes, Mr. President. As I told the court earlier, um, this book uh, was based on uh, documentations, including uh, the documents um, prepared or made during the DK regime, and the second uh, group of documents are those documents uh, prepared by researchers who are my pioneers in, that, in this research. And other sources of um, uh, my book was my interview with the victims who experienced their lives during the DK regime. President, in your research for uh, your book, what are the group of people that you interview for that purpose, and how many of them, as far as you remember? Uh, 
respond. Talking about witnesses and interviewees, I would like to uh, tell your honors that I could not remember the exact number unless I count them again because a number of interviews that I used for uh, my book, but other interviews that I didn't use as basis for my book, I didn't include in uh, the figure. That's all I can uh, recall. President, regarding the individuals you interview uh, in order to write your books, uh, who are they? You said that uh, the victims who uh, experienced their life during the K regime, um, uh, were there any uh, leadership cadre at the community or in the military of the DK? Respond. Yes, you are correct, Mr. President. In fact, I interviewed the victims and also perpetrators. The victims are those who live through the regime, who has knowledge of the regime. The perpetrators refer to the former cadre or the former uh, employee or staff of the Khmer Rouge regime, including village, village headmen, the military chairman at the village, at the commune, and other people which are belong to uh, the K regime as a leadership. President, based on your research and study, uh, could you indicate the statistics of charm people in Cambodia uh, during mid of April 1975? Uh, did your research get into uh, the figure of charm people in Cambodia um, during mid-April 1975. Um, do you have any figure or any uh, explanation to the chamber on this matter? Response. Um, in order to indicate uh, the figure for you, um, based on my research, I don't have the uh, documentation that recorded the figure or indicate the exact number of charm people at all. But I interview with people who saw documents, and those statistic documents were destroyed by the Khmer Rouge. So I could not rely on those uh, destroyed documents. So all I could do was that I interview the person who saw or who read the documents on statistic of charm people, uh, not only uh, during April 1975, but um, they talk about the figure of charm people before that, during the Lonol regime, and a little bit earlier than um, April 1975, the total number is 700,000 of charm people in Cambodia. President, thank you. During the period prior to April 1975, um, across the country, uh, can you tell the chamber in which area um, that um, most Cham people uh, were living in Cambodia? Response. 
Cham people who live in Cambodia, most of them were living in Kampong Cham province. And now under the administrative structure, a part of them uh, uh, it was in Thabong Kumum province, and they were from Champa. This is the area that um, close that is close to uh, Champa, and they fled to uh, to one um, entrance at the border at Kampong Cham, and uh, they fled the killing and um, uh, violation in Champa, and they went to the eastern part of Kampong Cham province, including Tabong Khmum district, um, Penye Krak, Dam Ba, and Krochma provinces. And among these um, districts, um, there were more than 50% of the Cham people across Cambodia. Most of them were living in Kampong Cham province. President, thank you. Based on your research on uh, demo democratic Cambodia, uh, can you tell the court what are the policies of DK towards the Cham people? Uh, can you uh, elaborate the basic policy of DK regime uh, targeting at or towards? the Cham people, um, please um, refer or focus on your research and study uh, to give your testimony before the chamber. Respond. Talking about uh, DK policies, I could not find any documents on uh, this matter. I could not find any document um, which is issued by the central, cent, uh, the central committee to uh, the Cham. But I would base on the person who saw such document and also those who participated in. Um, the treatment or in the um, uh, violation against the Cham people. And uh, based on uh, what I heard, uh, what was really happened to Cham people, and I found that Cham people were gathered and brought uh, for execution. President, uh, please, you may uh, proceed. I just request that the witness be asked to uh, clarify dates when he's talking about particularly policies because things can change over time, what dates he's speaking about. Thank you. I mean, approximate date. years. President, yes, Mr. Prosecutor, you have uh, your time, and these are my preliminary questions, so uh, you are advised to uh, put questions during your time when you would like to know uh, dates or approximate dates. Question, based on your study and research, can you indicate the reason why uh, DK has an intention to purge or to purge the Cham people in Cambodia? Respond. Yes, Mr. President. Until today, I still have a lot of doubt in my mind as to why they try to kill the Cham people. Um, in 1925, Cham people were living in their communities. Cham people uh, were considered to be uh, stubborn, and they are uh, strict to their uh, religion and their tradition. They 
don't want to give up. So any uh, force or threat uh, them uh, to stop speaking charm language, they were also uh, forced to eat pork. They did that. And uh, and later in 1977, the charm people were separated and put uh, to live with Cambodian people in the uh, Cambodian community. And I could not find any reason behind that, why they continue to kill those Cham people, unless I ask the uh, Khmer Rouge leadership about that. President, based on your research, um, Mr. Kape, I saw you on your feet, so you may proceed. Merci. President, thank Monsieur you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Um, I'm having um, a look again at um, document E215 of this chamber, Je suis en train de uh, le more particularly paragraph 16, le paragraph 16 de ce um, in which the chamber um, la considered the following, and I quote, dit la chose suivante. There seems to be no translation. Il n'y a-t-il pas de traduction? President, uh, Defense Council, uh, there is no technical issue. Uh, please uh, state your uh, stance again. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, it's not my intention to object, uh, just to seek some clarification um, as to one of your considerations in um, your decision E215, uh, more particularly paragraph 16, where I read the following, um, quote, expert witnesses may not express opinions on ultimate issues of fact as only the chamber is competent to make a judicial determination on the issues in the case. End of quote. And the chamber refers to um, the decision of the ICTR. Uh, you just asked this expert uh, to express his opinion on what possibly is the ultimate issue of fact, whether a policy to exterminate or kill or destroy as a group existed. So I'm, I'm a bit puzzled as to this particular paragraph, which is coming from uh, the chamber itself, and the last two questions. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. International Co Prosecutor, do you have the floor? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, of course, counsel makes a, a valid point, and the order of Your Honors make a valid point that an expert cannot make an opinion on an ultimate issue that the chamber has to determine. And that is ultimate issue is a fact of whether the evidence proves beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, the charges. Si so asking um, experts to give factual opinions that are not the ultimate de determination une, of whether or not the evidence proves beyond a reasonable doubt. So, for example, asking exemple, this expert, as Mr. Expert, President just did, uh, if he has information about the reasons behind the policy to kill is a factual matter that the court can consider in going and making its final determination. It is not asking the witness, uh, for example, does the evidence show an intention to destroy a group in whole or in part? That's the ultimate issue that uh, the expert should not be allowed to issue to uh, make a statement opinion on.
Président, je vous remercie de vos observations. The questions I put to the air expert is on the his work only and uh, not beyond that. Uniquement et ne vont pas au delà. And uh, the expert is reminded that uh, if you can respond to the questions, please do so. Si and if you cannot or if you do not understand the questions, faire, please also state so. Question, and uh, please uh, do not try to point your finger to any other party or individual. If you can respond to the question within your limit and knowledge, please do so. And the Chamber, of course, will consult all the available documents within the case file as to decide which witnesses or experts would be heard in this case. And Mr. Expert, through your research and study, can you inform the chamber how many charm people actually oui, survive after the fall of the uh, Democratic Community Regime that is on the 6th January 1979? What is the uh, number of the charm people uh, who survived the regime based on your research? Answer. Through the sources uh, of my research, it indicates that the Cham people who survived the killing is approximately 200,000. Approximately 200,000 Cham have survived the massacre. President, thank you. Now I move on to your second book, that is The Charm Rebellion. La Rebellion Charm. Can you uh, tell us how many years did you engage in the research before you published uh, your second book, that is The Charm Rebellion? And uh, my second book entitled The Jam Rebellion Réponse was officially published in English in 2006 by the Documentation Center of, of Cambodia. And did you actually uh, draft a book in English or in Khmer? Réponse. Ce livre l'avez-vous à la base rédigé en anglais ou en Khmer? Answer. It's the same as my first book. I Réponse. drafted the uh, manuscript in Khmer, was then translated Khmer, in English and published in English en anglais, only. Et Question. Question. Can you tell the uh, chamber the sources for that book? Quelle source, sur quelle source vous êtes basé pour rédiger ce livre? Answer. The uh, main source of this book Réponse. Pour rédiger sur li is ce livre. through my personal interviews with the victims sur les who were mostly uh, the Cham people. Qui sont However, however there were some Cham. perpetrators whom I interviewed. Il y a un and uh, que the interrogé. victims were, were those who survived the regime and who survived the uh, rebellion against the uh, Khmer rules, and they Khmer were Rouge. from Phum Pi, a Pi village in Khmer district. Pi dans le district de Khmer. Question. Question. Again, the, what types of people à nouveau, whom même you question. interviewed, and if you Quel recall, how many of them? Answer. Réponse. 
I must acknowledge that I do not have an exact figure of the interviewees. The research was conducted prior to 2006, and the book was published in 2006. The uh, types of people that I interviewed were the uh, direct victims and survivors of the killing. And the uh, second uh, group is the uh, former cadres who served as a security forces or who were the executioners of the regime. Question. Question. Can you tell the chamber the main the themes of your uh, second book, that is The Cham Rebellion? Les thèmes principaux de votre deuxième ouvrage, La Rebellion Cham. Answer. The book is divided into six uh, sections. Il y a six the chapitres. first section describes the uh, taking control uh, of uh, the Khmerus, that is the Khmerus uh, on the Khmerus revolution and the method employed by uh, the Khmerus or the Cham people the Khmer prior Rouge to 1975, that is starting from 1971 to 1975. The second section of the book is on the, the arrest of the Cham people in various villages, dans villages, namely the arrest of those who were religious leaders who were well off or who were respected in the villages and the arrest took place prior to 1975. The third section of the book describes the rebellion the by the Cham people in Kopal village. And the fourth uh, section Ensuite, is on the rebellion by the Cham people in Swai Klen village, which is my native village. And the fifth uh, section of the book, the second ouvrage. Describes the fate of the Cham people after the rebellion, in particular the massacre that took place in 1977. And the uh, sixth section is the uh, reference and uh, some annotations to uh, the book. Question based on your research. Can you tell the chamber if you recall the dates of the rebellions by the Cham people against the Khmer Rouge control? Did you find out the first rebellion that took place? La première révolte, vous souvenez-vous ou avez-vous découvert à quelle date elle a eu lieu? Answer. Réponse. Regarding the main rebellions. There were two rebellions in Kreutzmar district. district de Kreutzmar. But before the two main rebellions took place, there was one small rebellion. And let me talk about the small rebellion that took place in Trier village, which took place in 1973. And I do not and we do not know the specific dates and month when it took place, but we just nous knew nous that it took place in 1973. And later on, another one took place in 1975. It took place probably in September. Qui aurait pu avoir lieu en mois de September. That was the rebellion in Kohpal village in Krochma district. district. And then two de weeks later, Deux semaines plus tard, that was probably in October. Au mois October donc. At that time, the Cham people was under full control of the Khmer Rouge regime. And at that time, they had no calendar or watch or clock to tell about the date. 
uh, but the they date. speculated that it was probably in October. That was during the Ramadan month, based on the Islamic calendar. That was on the 29th of the Ramadan Donc, au 29e month. Jour that was the Ramadan. time when the rebellion against the Khmer Rouge took place in Swai Kliang village. Contre les Khmer President, thank you. De Swai Kliang. Le président. So Et what was aussi. the root cause of the Cham rebellion against the Khmer Rouge in Swai Kliang village? De Swai Kliang? Answer. Réponse. The, the rebellion took place first in Kopal enfin, village before the, village de the one at Swai Kliang village. But because you asked me about the one in Swai Kliang village, so let me talk about the one in Swai Kliang village. The rebellion in Swai Kliang village was a little bit different from the, the one in Kopal. Because the villagers in Swai Kleng did not dare much to protest against the Khmer Rouge. They, they obey what the Khmer Rouge told them to do. For example, if the Khmer Rouge told them to close the mosque, they closed the mosque. If the Khmer Rouge asked them to have their hair cut, they had their hair cut. If the Khmer Rouge asked them not to put on scarf de ne pas on the head for women, de foulard they sur la tête, euh, dans le took off scarf from the head. Leur hijab. So despite the, although they followed the Khmer Rouge instruction, they still faced donc, deaths. Les villageois, When they même exist, ils they also faced deaths. So be Rouge, before they decided to rebel, They, they, there was a list, and that list une contained liste names of about 100 people that would be arrested. Que so the youth in the village discussed about the list that if we, de cette liste, if we kept silent, they would, we still dit, would be killed. And if we resist, si we silence, also would be killed. So it's better to que resist. resist so que on so on nous at that night time, the youth gathered and they carried réunis. swords. Ils avec eux des épées. And the Khmer Rouge was aware of the plane, the Les plan, so the Khmer Rouge came to arrest. Complot, ils sont venus and les the Cham youth Each of them carried swords, Donc, les cham, les jeunes and cham when they épées, saw the Khmer Rouge arrived, the youth group chased the Khmer Rouge and Khmer Rouge arriver, used the sword to cut cham, the Khmer Rouge. And the youth group les, made announcement to the villagers to rise up against the Khmer Rouge. Des jeunes à exhorter les villageois that we had to struggle hard to defend our religion and we dare to die for the cause of our religion. So other villagers also rose up to rebel despite they did not have clear plan or clear leadership for the rebellion. So each of them took swords to rebel against the Khmer Rouge arrest. Pour lutter contre and les in the next morning, se contre ces the villagers le lendemain matin, dug trench because they were aware that there would be a bigger groups of the Khmer Rouge who would come to arrest the Cham. So they dug trench in order to hide themselves and in order to defend themselves from the Khmer Rouge arrest. But because they had only they had only arms, only swords that could not withstand the Khmer Rouge who had 
Ils n'ont pas pu uh, résister aux Khmer Rouge qui eux, disposaient d'armes à feu. So the rebellion by the charm could Et withstand donc, the Khmer Rouge crackdown for only one day, la... and at the end. The Khmer Rouge defeated the la rebellion Khmer Rouge que pendant une seule journée and qui many people including old people et beaucoup de gens y compris des young personnes people âgées, des jeunes were arrested and were forced to arrêtés, drop their their weapons de and they were arrested and guarded and put in the detention center ont été envoyés dans un centre de détention and during the arrest They gather men Dans who were considered as having energy, who were considered as having force to rebel. Considérés comme étant plus they were dynamiques ou plus forts et qui étaient capables de se révolter, ces gens ont été because the detention facility could not house the too many people who were arrested. And people became stout and sick Les and injured sont malades, and as a result blessés, many of them died one after another Ils sont morts après and during the detention men were put in a separate alors qu'ils étaient en détention facility from the women centre de détention différent children were separated from the mothers les aussi ont été séparés de leur mère and the remaining detainees who survived from the killing were later on allowed to reunite with their families les retrouver leur famille and they were evacuated to Other places, et ces gens ont tous été ensuite été transférés à d'autres endroits et n'ont pas pu rentrer dans leur village natal. So, they allow families to get reunion, but husband could not recognize wife and wife could not recognize husbands because they were so hungry and thin. Les époux ne se reconnaissaient pas car ils étaient si Some of them were evacuated to live in the east zone and some were evacuated to the north. Vers la zone nord. And this is my answer to your Et question, voilà Mr. President. Question, Monsieur le President. President, thank you for your detailed answer. Merci and de now it's time for détaillée. Et a le break. moment est venu de prendre la pause. And the chamber will take a break Nous from now until 10.30. And court officer, please find for this expert and his legal officers in the waiting room reserved for them to rest during the break time. And please invite them back to, the, to this courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess.